Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so today I thought we'd take a look at three fairly simple probability problems. Uh, and so this is the first one. It says, what is the expected number of fair coin flips to get two consecutive heads? Have a think about it and I'll give you the answer right away. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Well, if you go back to my first video, I actually define a trick that we're going to use right here. So let's define x to be the number of expected coin flips to get two consecutive heads. Okay, we've defined x to be the expected number of flips to get two consecutive heads. And let's think about what the first two flips could be. Well, the first two flips could either be heads heads, uh, heads tails, tails heads, or tails tails. So let's look at each, each of these examples uh, separately. Okay, so we have our four scenarios defined. Um, note that each of these has probability of one fourth of happening since this coin is fair. And let's take a look at uh, some of these. So for heads heads, we just know that this takes two. Uh, yeah, the expected number of flips is two. Then for heads tails, we know that we're back at the beginning because uh, after heads and tails, we again just have to get two heads. So we're back basically where we started. So this would just be x plus two. Um, since we already flipped two times, and now our uh, expected number of flips to get is x again. Um, and so same for tails tails, this is actually x plus two as well, for the same reasons, because we just start over, and we've already flipped twice. So yeah, this would just be x plus two. So the only other scenario we have to uh, think about is tails heads. So for tails heads, we'll actually split this up into two separate cases. Uh, one is where we get heads on the third throw. So it'd be tails heads heads. Um, and the second one is if we get tails heads tails. Um, and you'll see that in this case, if we get tails head tails, then our expected number of flips to get two consecutive heads is just x plus three, because we've flipped the coin three times and we're back where we started at the beginning. And then tails heads heads, this is just three. Um, so yeah, so this is all we need to solve the problem. So here we can just say that x is equal to uh, one fourth times two plus one fourth times x plus two plus uh, one fourth times x plus two. And then here we'll have plus one over eight times three um, times plus one over eight times x plus three. Okay, so this is an expression we can just solve for x. Uh, this is one half plus one fourth times x plus one half plus one fourth times x plus one half plus uh, three over eight plus one over eight x plus three over eight. And so taking the x's to the left hand side, we get uh, 3 over 8x. And this is just 4 over 8 plus 4 over 8. Um, that's 8 over 8. Um, plus 4 over 8, that's uh, 12 over 8. And then plus 6 over 8, that's just uh, 18 over 8 is equal to 18 over 8. Um, and so from there, it just follows that x is equal to 18 over 3, which is equal to 6. Uh, let's see if this is right in a simulation. OK, so let's import random. And let's define the fair coin game. Um, with n trials and we can just say uh, coin is equal to heads and then tails oh tails there we go um, we'll also keep track of the number of flips uh, this will just keep track of the total number of flips uh, so then we can loop through the n trials we'll say done is equal to false uh, we'll also say last was head is equal to uh, false as well and then um, we'll just say flips is equal to zero. This will keep track of the local flips in this particular trial. Um, so we'll just say while not done. Um, then we can say x is equal to random dot choice choice um, from that coin. Um, and also we'll increment flips by one here. And we can say if x is equal to head head. Yep. Um, now we'll just say if last was head, uh, then we'll increment or actually we'll say done is done is equal to true. Um, then else we can just say last was head is equal to true. And uh, we can also say um, if x is not head, we'll just say last was head is equal to false. Okay. And out here we can just add flips to a number of flips. Uh, flips, okay. And then out here we'll just print uh, expected number of flips. Uh, and we'll just say number of flips divided by n. There we go. We can add another print statement here or yeah, print nothing. And then we'll run this for like 100,000 games. OK, so if you run this, uh, oh, OK, never mind. Uh, we just fair coin game. OK, let's try to run it now. So we get around six, uh, which is exactly what we calculated. OK, so for number two, we have A and B chosen randomly from the interval from zero to one. 
and we want to find the probability that the expression x squared plus ax plus b is equal to zero has real solutions. So have a think and I'll give you the answer right away. So to solve this problem, we're actually going to be using the quadratic formula. Uh, you'll know that if you have an expression ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, then the solutions of this equation is given by the quadratic formula. Okay, so here's the quadratic formula. And actually, whether this whole term is uh, real or not is just decided by this term right here. Uh, since if we have a negative value under this square root, uh, we'll get a, a, a complex number. Whereas if this number is positive, uh, we'll get a real number. So really what we want to find is the probability that uh, b squared is greater than or equal to 4ac, since then uh, this would be real. And actually in this case, like a is equal to 1, uh, b is equal to a, and then c is equal to b. Uh, so it's kind of confusing. So really what we want to find is the probability um, that a squared is greater than or equal to 4b. This is an a. Okay. And this is a b. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we want to find the probability that a squared is greater than or equal to 4b. And so rewriting this, we get that this is the same as the probability that b is less than or equal to a squared over 4. And so how do we solve this? Well, if you take a look at this picture, um, you'll see that we, we drew a on the horizontal axis, b on the vertical axis. And then we also have the uh, a squared over 4 function here plotted. And so for what values of a, let, let's say we have this value of a, right? Um, b will only be less than or equal to a squared over 4 is if b is in this region right here, is below this line. If b is above this line, then b will be greater than or equal to a squared over 4. Um, so that, that wouldn't work. So really what we want to find is the area under this curve right here, um, all this stuff, which is just an integral. So the probability that b is less than or equal to a squared over 4 is just the integral from 0 to 1 of a squared over 4 dA. Um, and so solving this, we just get that um, this is a to the 3 over 12 um, evaluated at 1 and 0, which is just uh, 1 over 12. So to sum up, the probability that this expression right here has real, real solutions is just 1 over 12. Uh, let's see if this is true in a simulation. So let's start off by importing random. Uh, we'll define the real solu solutions function. Um, there we go. And we'll just say uh, real is equal to 0. This will keep track of how many of our solutions are real. Um, say in range n and then we'll just let a is equal to uh, random dot uniform uh, from 0 to 1 and same thing for b random dot uniform uh, from 0 to 1 and then we'll say if a times a uh, is greater than or equal to uh, 4 times b i'll just say real plus equal to 1 and so here we can just say uh, expected or sorry probability that solution is real um, and we'll just say real divided by n. Okay, let's we'll add another print statement. And then here we'll say uh, real solutions, and we'll run this for like 100,000 trials. Okay, so if you run this, we get 0.83 about, uh, which is 1 over 12. All right, so for our last problem, we have two archers shooting at a target. Uh, the distance from each shot from the center of the target is uniformly distributed from 0 to 1, uh, independently of the other shot. So what is the probability density function of the distance from the center of the winning shot? Okay, so if you've had a thought about it, let's define two variables, uh, x1 and x2, um, which is the distance from the center of the first shot and the second shot. And so the winning shot will just be uh, x, and this will just be the minimum of x1 and x2. Okay, so we want to find the probability density function of this x. Okay, so to solve this, let's try to find the probability that x is less than or equal to x uh, for any x in uh, the closed interval from 0 to 1. So this is just equal to the probability that the minimum of uh, x1 and x2 is less than or equal to x, which is uh, equal to the probability, or sorry, which is equal to 1 minus the probability that the minimum of x1 and x2 um, is greater than x. And so when is the minimum of x1 and x2 greater than x? Well, that's the case when both x1 and x2 are greater than x. Um, and so we have that this is equal to 1 minus the probability that x1 is greater than x and x2 is greater than x. And since the shots are independent, um, this is equal to the probability that x1 is greater than x times the probability that x2 is greater than x. Um, and this is just, since they're uniformly distributed, this is just 1 times 1 minus x times 1 minus x. Uh, since the probability that x1 is greater than x is just 1 minus x. 
Okay, so we have that the probability of x uh, is less than or equal to x is equal to 1 minus 1 minus x squared. And so to get the density from there, we just take the derivative with respect to x. So we take d over dx, the probability that x is less than or equal to x. Um, it's just the derivative with respect to x of this expression, 1 minus x squared, um, which is just uh, 2 times 1 minus x. So that's the uh, density function of uh, this archer shooting at a target. All right, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time.